Hello and welcome to class, this time via the Sydney and Lois Eskenazi Hospital. Um, I'm sorry I couldn't be with you, but I'm sure you're watching this in the comfort of your, ho your own home or maybe a coffee house or something like that. But, um, so today, uh, so, so hopefully you'll enjoy this. Uh, but today we, we get to talk about or introduce um, the first of many different types uh, or subcategories of objectivist ethics or uh, objective ethics, and that will be consequentialist ethics. Um, now, if you remember, objective ethics are those ethical systems that believe that there is at least one universal moral principle. Um, it's possible, according to many of these, it's possible that there's only one, and that um, all other ethics or ethical principles are subjective. Uh, but, th but if there's at least one, one universal moral principle that applies to everyone of every every place um, at any given time on the earth, then this that, that system would be a an objective um, a system of objective ethics. Okay, so uh, as you recall, if you'll look at the roadmap that we talked about, um, I think second or third week of class, uh, you will you if you recall we had listed. On the side of objective ethics, there are several subcategories of that. The first one is consequentialist ethics, and those are ethics that, um, that that judge a moral action based on the consequences that the action produces. Uh, there's also, uh, as you, if you recall, deontological ethics, and those were ethi those were ethical systems that attempt to judge the moral rightness of an act based on uh, based on whatever your duty or obligation is in that in, in, in that act. Um, and then there was sort of, um, the, there was, after that there were virtue ethics, uh, and that's sort of, virtue ethics and, and some other sort of miscel miscellaneous ones. But virtue ethics uh, judges not on the basis of the consequences, nor on the basis of the duty. Virtue ethics, as we'll see, judges on the basis of the character of the person performing the act. Uh, now, th those will become a little bit more, more clear as we continue on, but today uh, what I want to do is endeavor to look at and, and just do a brief overview of the different types of consequentialist ethical systems uh, that, that, are, that we'll, we'll be studying. Now, um, on these videos, uh, I, there's not a chance for interaction. Um, and, and personally, I, I think that people learn better uh, through question and answer, especially if I'm not being clear on a point or, or something like that. So what I'm going to try to do on the, for the video um, is I'm going to give a brief introduction to both ethical egoism and utilitarianism, the two primary consequentialist ethical systems that we'll look at, uh, and, and then we'll spend time, we'll spend time when, when I get back uh, discussing those more at length and, and kind of uh, looking at some of the uh, logical implications of those systems. So, so anyhow, um, so what I'm the only thing I'm going to attempt to do right now is is to just give a brief outline of both systems, um, and, and we'll talk about it more when when I return next week. Okay, so uh, consequentialist ethics. Uh, now, the, the, this is a, a whole subcategory of ethics, and if, uh, just as we said earlier, consequentialist ethics are are those systems of ethics, uh, the different views. Uh, the, the, the thing that they have in common is that they attempt to judge the, the rightness or wrongness of an act based on the consequences that that act produces. Um, and so the first, uh, the first system that we'll look at there uh, that falls under this category of consequentialist ethics is ethical egoism. Ethical egoism. Now, ethical egoism believes that uh, ha has, has one operating principle, and that is this. Um, ethical egoism is the view that a person always ought to do what is in his or her own best interest. <clears throat> the moral thing to do, the moral act to do, is the act that produces the effect of, or, or the consequences of, uh, the, being in that person's best interest. So, ethical egoism is the view that a person always ought to act in such a way so as to promote their own best interest. Now. If I were to ask, um, which is more, which is a more ethical practice, being selfish or being um, altruistic? I think that most people would say that altruism, or the idea that we ought to look out for one another's own, one another's best interests, that we should be selfless, that we should be giving, 
typically uh, altruism is, is 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 heralded as a as a moral virtue uh, that we should be a selfless person that when it, whenever I'm doing something uh, in a manner that that is not self-interested that is the moral thing to do um, egoists don't don't agree with that egoists sort of flip it around on its head and say no actually what is the most moral thing to do the, the most moral thing to do is to look out for my own best interests that's that that is the egoist uh, understanding now um, that's uh, a that, 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 that seems to be sort of counterintuitive to us uh, but to give you an example of why maybe an egoist believes that l let me let me illustrate by the following um, there was in the history of, of, of missionary work there was a used to be a missionary whose name was Lottie Moon and she lived a couple hundred years ago and and she did uh, she did ministry she was going to do ministry in in China uh, she had a real heart for you know doing missions there and things so anyway she uh, she gets on a boat and goes over to China um, and she establishes her mission and she's doing very well and one of the one of the things that she did with, with her mission is that she did a she, she had a like a food pantry some t a place where people could come and if they were too poor to afford food they would come in and and, um, and, and, and get food there for free and so she would she would hand out food to people so that she could feed hungry people I mean that's a that, that, sound, that sounds like a very selfless thing to do um, now uh, as uh, as she continued on uh, in, in ministry what ended up happening was that uh, that there was a lot of need there where she was and a lot of people who were going hungry and so and so what she ended up doing was giving away her food giving away her food giving away her food and to the point where she wasn't even feeding herself uh, and her health suffered as a result um, in fact it suffered so bad she was practically starving herself it suffered so bad that she uh, she got sick and they were going to send her back to the United States to uh, to you know convalesce or heal and get better uh, but on the way back to the United States she was she was on a boat on the way back she she died because of the complications brought on by her self-imposed starvation now the egoist would look at that and say see see how what what what, what kind of a waste is that because altruism requires that we look out for the interests of everyone else but it doesn't affirm a, a right to for ourselves to live and so because altruism does not affirm our right to provide for ourselves it's too busy looking out for everybody else it is inherently immoral according to the egoist uh, they'll say look it's incompatible with life because of, because you can always give more to somebody else people out there are always going to be more, needing more and more and so if you follow through consistently with altruism says the egoist it ends up in your death you you, you just you give yourself away until you just until you just die because you're, you're starving yourself so um, that would that would be the egoist they would say look um, that's why altruism is, is a terrible policy to follow in fact they would say people don't really actually ever follow altruism there are people who say they do and this is the egoist talking there are people who say they do but they don't really because the, even when they are in it uh, for charity's sake for instance even they, they would say look at the example even of Lottie Moon the missionary that I was talking about they would say she had some sort of benefit for for giving her food away maybe it wasn't a life-sustaining benefit but she had some sort of peace of mind or some sort of enhanced psychological state she, she it made her happy it made her joyful to give that food away and see other people filled while she herself starved so she was in it for something even if that something didn't end up sustaining her life in other words the egoist simply says look everybody is motivated by their own self-interest it's just that some people uh, don't really understand what their tr what their best interest truly is now this brings us to an interesting point a lot of times egoism can be confused with, uh, with, with, with selfishness, okay, or egotism. Um, and let me, let me draw a, a sort of a distinction between the two. Uh, a lot of times people will say that an egoist simply is just out in it for their own benefit in, in the sense that, um, that, that, uh, that they're just trying to get their kicks. You know, they're just trying to do what makes them happy. But that's not what an ethical egoist actually believes. 
You see, an egoist believes that a person always act ought, a person always ought to act in their own best interest. But that requires us to to reflect upon what actually constitutes your best interest. If you ask a heroin addict, for instance, what is in their own best interest, uh, they may say something along the lines of, well, getting my next hit is in my best interest. It's going to keep me calm. It's going to keep me level. It's going to me, make me feel good. It's going to, you know, and, and these things, because maybe they're going through withdrawal and maybe they're, you know, they're having the sweats and they're having pains and aches and headaches and the shakes and, and all these things. Um, and they're saying, I need a hit. That's what's in my best interest. But is it really? I mean, is it really? Is it in, the, in a heroin addict's best interest to continue on abusing drugs? Well, that's going to destroy their body at some point. Um, and so, uh, and so uh, that the ego says, look, that person, while they may think they're acting in their best interest, they're really not. So what a person, according to the egoist, what a person must do is to use reason to find out what actually is in their own best interest. And then once they do, then act on that, even if it doesn't result in immediate sort of gratification. What is truly in our best interest is what uh, is what we what we need to do. Now that that requires reason, that requires us to, uh, to you know to, to to be able to think through what actually what actually constitutes our own best interest. So, egoism is not egotism. Egoism. Um, requires thought. It's not just, uh, it's not uh, subjective, subjectivism. I'm going to do what's right for me. Uh, the, the two sound similar, but they're very different because what's good for us is actually a, an objective thing, right? Um, I may feel like I should eat chocolate and uh, stay in bed all day and, and watch Netflix, but that's really not in my best interest, you know, uh, because the chocolate eventually is going to make me sick. And the staying in bed is eventually going to make me uh, is going to make me sedentary, and the watching Netflix all day. Well, eventually Netflix will get shut off because I don't have a job to pay for next Netflix. So, my what actually is, is in my best interest would, would be something quite different than maybe what I feel like doing at the moment. So the the, the ethical egoist would say that is what we must pursue and follow the, the things that are actually in our best interest. Now. Um, um, another misconception, and, and I've alluded to this, um, but I interrupted myself. Another misconception is that eth ethical egoism is the same thing as egotism. Um, here, here's the difference between egoism and egotism. Egoism says that everyone ought to always act in their own best interest. So I'm going to act in my own best interest, and you, you should act in your own best interest. And the next person should act in their own best interest, and so on, and so on, and so on. Um, so each person must act in their own best interest. Now, egotism, on the other hand, says something along the lines of this. It says, I'm going to act in my best interest, and it is the responsibility of everyone else to help me do that. Okay. So in other words, the world revolves around me. Um, I, I am, I'm, I'm the greatest good, and everybody should everybody should uh, should bend their life in order to make mine work better. Now that's egotism. That's the idea that everybody should look out for my best interest. Those are two very different things. Egoism says everybody, I look out for my best interest. You look out for yours. He looks out for his. She looks out for hers. Um, and uh, whereas egotism says, hey, everybody, look, I'm, I'm the greatest thing since sliced bread. Uh, everybody, you know, pay homage to that greatness. Um, so anyway, th that's the difference between the two. So just because a person is um, egotistical doesn't mean they're an egoist, okay? An egoist says, look, everybody, look out for your own best interest. That is the guiding moral principle of egoism. Now, uh, let's see. Egoism. There are several arguments advanced in favor of egoism that an egoist would give. Um, the first one, and this is, some of these are listed in your books, um, but the first one is this. Uh, psychological egoism implies ethical egoism. Now, w those are two different things, um, but, uh, but let me explain what, what, what's being said here. The egoist says, look, if you ask the average person why they do what they do, um, Generally, it's because it's what they wanted to do, because it's what they considered to be best for them. 
So a person is motivated by, by self-interest already anyway. The problem is, is that with psychological egoism, a person doesn't really think through what actually is in their own best interest. This is like the, the heroin addict or the person laying in bed eating chocolate all day or, or, or things like that. A, a person is motivated um, by self-interest. But not everybody reasons through what actually is in their own best interest. So the ethical, the, the psychological egoism is just that you do what you do because you think it's best for you. Ethical egoism says, hey, look, um, we need to take that a step further. And we need to use reason to reason what actually is in our best interest and then act on that. But the fact that everybody seems to be motivated by what they think is best for them implies that ethical egoism is actually the rule the, the sort of natural law by which morality is governed. Uh, so that's, that's one argument advanced in favor of ethical egoism, that psychological egoism, the fact that everybody simply thinks they're acting in their own best interest, means that we should just improve on that. And, and that, uh, that, that, that phenomenon means that uh, that's the way the world is, that everybody does it, everybody acts that way, so we might as well sort of think through it and reason it out as opposed to just what we feel is, is right for us. Um, another, another, uh, and this is, this is a good argument, um, another argument advanced in favor of egoism, actually it was uh, raised by Thomas Hobbes first, uh, is that social contract implies egoism. Social contract, now you'll recall we talked about social contract. Social contract is where relatively equal people who exist in the state of nature come together and agree to give up certain rights so that they can live peaceably in society with one another and not kill each other, right? They appoint a sovereign over them to enforce their agreement, uh, and, and now what we have is the possibility of a civilization. But think about those people back when they're in the state of nature. Why are they entering into this social contract? Is it because they feel really great about helping other people? Is it because they want to see society and civilization thrive and survive and, and, and do well? No, people are entering into this social contract, not because, not for the benefit of others, not out of concern for the well-being of others. They're entering this social contract because they believe that that's, that that's going to benefit them. They believe that's going to benefit them. So, uh, so uh, social contract, the very, the very, the, the very, uh, as it 